we have found that Google Groups are vital to the way we set up and manage Google Admin Consoles. But is a Google Group not just another mail group? Well, we'll cover that in this video. Hi, welcome back to our tutorial series on how to master the Google Admin Console. My name is Leon. I work for the company called Cloudwise, the creators of the Cool School platform. Here at Cool, we help schools on how to use IT within education. And within this YouTube series, we like to share our knowledge and experience with you on how to manage the Google Admin Console. In this specific video, we will cover Google Groups and how to set them up. If we're at our dashboard, we go to Groups to go to the Groups Overview. Now, what is a Google Group? Now, in the introduction, I already asked the question, isn't a Google Group just a mail group? Not exactly. Um, sure, you use it the same way. It has a general email address, as we can tell here. And when we send an email message to it, anyone who is attached to the group normally would receive that message as well. That is the basic functionality that you would use it for. But it can be useful to create groups for other uses as well. One of the ways that we tend to use them the most is in conjunction with shared drives, for example. The way we do that is that we create the shared drives based on the typical roles or workplaces we need to generate for an organization. But then we also have Google Groups that we then assign as members to a shared drive. Now, the great thing about that is, is that all you have to do is change the members of a Google Group to ensure that new employees automatically gain access to the necessary drives, folders, and files. But besides that, there are also other ways that you could use a Google Group. And one of them, I think, is usually forgotten or people don't know about, is the fact that they also lend themselves very well to being used as a shared inbox. So for example, you have an info at your school domain email address that is a great way to use a Google Group because that makes sure that other people can all manage the same email address, essentially, and reply to them. Not only that, it doesn't require you to communicate every single time that you say, I answered this email, but I will not cover the shared inbox functionality in this video. I'll do that in the next video I will upload. Of course, it's also very useful now to know how to create a group. So let's go and do that. We go to create a group. And when we do that, we can fill in some details. So I'll do that really quickly and I'll be right back to you. All right, I fill in some details and we have created or we're going to create a group for school leaders, essentially directors within our foundation or within our district. And we just want one email address to make sure that we can address all of them in one go or maybe share something with them in one go. What I have done is add a group owner. Now the owners are able to add new people, can manage essentially the entire Google group, which again, I'll cover in the next video in more detail. Um, but this is not required to do when we create a group. Maybe you as an admin want full control over your Google groups, then you don't need to add any group owners. And we can just go to the next page. Now we get to a very important step because when we create a Google group, we need to set permissions, essentially. And this has to do with the access settings. Now, there are a few presets from public, team, announcement only, restricted, and custom. This has to do with what certain roles can do with this specific group. And it's relevant to understand what any of these steps mean in order for you to best set them for the specific case that you need to create a group for. Contact owners literally means that we know who the group owners are and we can contact them. View members means we can actually see who is currently a member of this group. View conversations means we can see all the messages that have been posted, have been sent to the email address. Publishing posts means we can send messages to this group. And then we have membership settings. So who can manage members, who can invite them and who can approve them. Because then who can join this group? This currently is set to anyone in your organization can join. 
meaning that people can simply look within Google Groups, search for the group name, and then add themselves to this group. Now with a group of school leaders, I can imagine that maybe some sense of information is shared. So you probably don't want this. And instead we will set it to only invited users. You could also decide to make it anyone in the organization can ask, meaning that then any group owners or group managers in this case, because it is set to these uh, both these groups, that they can manage those requests and approve them or deny it. It also has a toggle to allow or prohibit members from outside your organization to be allowed to be a member of this group. So this can be used for a variety of situations. And if we take the announcement only, for example, as a setup, then you see that currently members can not view who the other members are. They can view any conversations that have been posted, so any message that is sent to this group, but they themselves cannot publish any posts, so they cannot send anything to this group. Now, essentially, you would use this, for example, if you have a newsletter email address. You have a newsletter at your school, then you send it to this email address. And in this way, your normal employees and your, uh, your staff cannot actually send messages to this email address, but they will receive all the messages you send to the email address. So they get all the news information you want to share. Now, if we set it to public, the interesting or weird thing about it is that by default, it says that external parties cannot publish posts. This can actually create a problem when we want to use this for external communication as well. Um, bear in mind that if we create a Google group and you want people from outside your school to be able to contact it, that we have to allow external publishing of posts or else we will get messages back uh, stating um, that the messages are not delivered. So this is rather important to know when you create a Google group, obviously. Now I'm going to change the settings so that it fits better with this specific case. So we have school leaders that we want to have a kind of a private environment to share information with each other. Okay, so what I've done now, I have set it to restricted, meaning that anyone can contact the owners if they want to. Um, but the only ones who can view members, view the messages and send new messages are have to be at least group members. I am also going to set it to only invited users and I am not going to allow people from outside the organization to be added to this group. Now let's say that I want to create a generalized email address and have all the parents' email addresses in them, then of course we would have to set this to allow. Okay, that's good. We have now created a group for our school leaders. Now immediately we can set to add new members or see the group details or create another group. For now, I'm just gonna click done because I am going to show you how to add new users to this Google group that we have just created as if it is just any other group. Now, of course, I have created a lot of Google groups in this domain, so I will need to filter for it. I have searched for school leaders and I can then hover over this and I can click it to see more details. I can view the access type and I can add members, manage the members and add it to settings. I will simply go over the details first so that you have an overview of what it is you can do within one group. Now, as with a user, we can rename the group. So in the same way, we can change the name here. We can delete the group, obviously, and we can see the group email. Now, if you want to change that, we could. Um, we can even add aliases if that is what we want. But for now, what we want to do is go to members. Now with members, we now have one direct member, which is Steve. Steve, I added as a owner of this group, meaning he is one of the people that can manage this entire group. If I want to add new members, I can simply click add members or use a bulk upload. So in this case, I'm just gonna go and use this. And I can click for advanced if I would like. But the only thing that it adds is making sure that any new user within our environment and all existing users are automatically added to this group. The reason you would do that is only when you have one specific group that you made for your organization 
and you know that the only people that are making use of your Google Workspace environment are actually employees. Uh, for schools, for example, this would almost never be common practice because then you would also have all the students within the same Google group. Unless there's a general notification, a general announcement that would go to the entire school, then perhaps for one of those Google groups, you would use that. But normally we just add them in this way. So it may take a time before this is updated. And as you can see now, we are there and the new users that have been added are added as a member. Now, if you want to change that, we simply click it and change the role here. If we want to remove them, we can do it by simply hovering over one of the names and clicking remove. And it's really that simple. Now, you don't have to per se manually fill your Google groups uh, like I just showed you. You can also create dynamic groups. Dynamic groups you can create based on a condition. And this condition is usually certain details that you add to a user profile. For example, their address country or their code. Any custom fields that you may add and fill, you can use to specify whether or not a user should be a member of this group. Now, doing it in such a way, it would be very important for you to set custom details, custom fields within your user's profile and make sure that you keep this updated. Now, that will probably only work when you use a comma separated file to bulk upload your users and keep it updated that way. Another way to do it is, for example, use an external party that automatically generates Google Groups for you. For example, Cool does this based on the school information system where we get our information from to already provision accounts. In the same way, we can also automatically generate and update Google Groups in a like-minded fashion. Making sure that you as an admin don't have to worry about generalized groups like a group that specifies all the employees all the students or a specific group per student group, for example. And this is already the basics on how to set up a Google group. Now, in the next video, I will talk about how you can set up a Google group based on the shared inbox principle. And I will go into a Google group and show you what settings you can do, what you should think about. So you know, as an admin, how to set it up for your employees. If you like this video, do let us know by liking it and subscribing to our channel. On our channel, you'll find more videos. So if you want to learn more, do look around. By making sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications, you don't miss out on any of the uploads we will do. We plan on doing an upload every week, so stay tuned for more short how-to videos on how to manage the Google Admin Console. For now, thank you so much for watching. My name is Leon, and I'll see you in the next video.